my life had become so desperate. Um, I was homeless. I uh, lived in parks, in boxes. I uh, got beaten up severely. And um, my uh, cheekbone and my um, bone around my eye was crushed. And I couldn't see and I couldn't speak. And I was going in and out of consciousness. And when I would wake up, I would just scream because I didn't know where I was and I was scared to death. And I had an intern that would touch my shoulder and he'd say, you're safe. Nobody's going to hurt you. And we say that to people at SAGE all the time. We know that when somebody walks through our door, they are trusting us at such a deep level that we're not going to hurt them. There are so many things that they can remember, but they can't understand and sometimes never will. We're going to let them heal from these unspeakable things with dignity and with love. But you're always sitting with this hope that what you're doing here in this little isolated space is going to make a difference somewhere else out in the world. When you have a life uh, like we have, to be able to turn it around and give back. And I was in Seoul, and they were waiting for me, and I was trying to get to them. And I walked by a room, and it was like magnet. I just felt it. And I looked in, and there were the 30 survivors sitting there. And they all started clapping, and they all started crying, and I started crying and they came up to me one by one and whispered in my ear, I'm going to carry on your legacy. I'm going to carry on your work. People don't think that, it, that just one person can make a difference. They act pretty powerlessly. When that happens, they can always look to Sage for inspiration and say, if that Norma Hotelling, that ex-prostitute, formerly homeless woman, 21-year heroin addict, can not only turn her life around, but change communities, change the lives of other women, and, and in many cases, change the world.